Hey guys, Tom Cherry Holmes here with Errata Online, and I wanted to give a quick status update showing what I've been working on for the last two weeks. I've managed to take a version of Play-Doh Term and squeeze it down into a 16K cartridge for the Atari 8-bit machines. You see it here in one of uh, an XEGS uh, 32K cartridge. Uh, thanks to Albert Uriso. I want to say a big thank you to Albert for um, providing the uh, cartridge here so I could do final dev testing on real hardware. Uh, we have here just a fairly standard 27256E prompt that's um, holding the program code. And since this is a 16K program, I had to take and double this up so it would take and line up in the banks correctly. So. With that, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, show a little bit of my test setup here. Uh, my test setup is an Atari 1200XL uh, that I have an Ultimate 1MB fitted inside of it to give me a wide range of uh, testing options here, different operating systems and memory configurations. A very indispensable board if you don't already have one. I also have here a joystick set up as a touch device plugged into joystick port number one. Uh, for serial connectivity, I have an Atari 850 interface uh, that is plugged up to a Raspberry Pi Zero that is running TCP SARE, providing the virtual modem emulation which will be used to connect to Errata Online. So with that, we'll go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and put this into the uh, 1200's cartridge slot, which if you know anything about the 1200XL and the fact that this is a bare cartridge board. This is a bit of a challenge in and of itself. So uh, give me just a moment to take and put this in. Okay, now I've put the cartridge into the cartridge bay here and we're going to go ahead and turn the machine on. Now this cartridge is configured exactly the same way as the uh, Atari basic cartridge or other language cards. It is a 16K cartridge but it is configured to boot from the disk. The, um, the side effect of this is, if you don't have a disk drive connected and you have an Atari 850 or a PR connection, similar device connected, that can bootstrap its own handler, when we turn this on, it will do the right thing. Go ahead and wait for the Ultimate 1 and B to come up. You hear the handler bootstrap. And just like that, we're inside Play-Doh Term, ready to go. Now a few things to note that are, very, that are different from the uh, disc version. Uh, one, the splash screen is completely gone. It's been removed for memory considerations. Also, the baud rate is fixed at 1200 baud. If you want a different baud rate, the ROM has to be modified. And of course, I will take and provide instructions on what bytes to patch in order for that to happen. Uh, there is also no saving of preferences at all. Uh, but otherwise, the terminal is completely and utterly fully functional. So, we go ahead and log in. And we can see that it works exactly like the disk version in this regard. Going forward as well, since a lot of people complained about the speed of the fill function, the fill is not uh, has been taken out of both the disk and the cartridge versions until further notice. Uh, we'll go ahead and log in. And you'll see here, even with 1200 bits per second, the performance is still quite acceptable. So we we'll go ahead, go into let's look let's look at some notes for example. We we'll go ahead and select the notes file here. And there was an early bug in early builds of the cartridge. If anybody happened to get them, you'll know you would have noticed that uh, the uh, the note numbers here were not showing up, and it was because of a bug in, that I had introduced, squeezing the cartridge down in the color parsing code. So that's been fixed. Everything is back is, is now back to normal. And as you can see, you know, reading a note just fine. 
Just as in the disc version, uh, the control sequences mapping uh, Play-Doh keys to Atari keys is exactly the same. So we go ahead and hit Control shift s for Shift-Stop. We get an indication to continue working or Shift-Stop to sign off. And we go ahead and sign off. And we can plus, 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 A-T-H. And there we go. Now, in addition to the standard terminal functions, the select key is used to select special functions. In particular, uh, you can switch between TTY and Play-Doh mode by pressing select T for TTY mode, or select P to switch back into Play-Doh mode, respectively. This is especially useful if you come into Play-Doh term for one reason or another and you're already connected so you can take and flip back and forth between the modes as you need to to take and reset if uh, you've gotten out of sync for one reason or another. Uh, in addition, if you go ahead and press select X, that exits Play-Doh term. Now, depending on what, the, what happens afterwards depends on whether or not you have DOS loaded or not. If you don't have DOS loaded, then it will just jump through DOSVEC into whatever your default boot up is. For the 1200XL, for example, we'll wind back up at the splash screen. So, we'll go ahead for the next bit here. We'll actually take and plug in my ape, con my ape connection here so I can show booting from disk. So we go ahead. And we can see booting here from a DOS 2.0 disk. Everything works just as expected here. And if we go ahead and hit select X here, We see here that we boot right into DOS. Now I actually did specify a mem save file here because under DOS 2.0 this is required so that you don't overwrite your handler while booting into the disk utility package. But as you can see here, everything works as expected. If we go ahead and press basic to go back to basic, or to go back to the cartridge, the B to go back to the cartridge, we see that we're back here. And again, everything works as expected. It also works under Spurtadoss X. So if we go ahead, for example, and load the Ultimate 1 MB and select, say, an Atari XL here running Spurtadoss X. We can see that this is just fine. Now, if we go ahead and run car, we didn't load any handler here, so we won't see anything here. We went, oops, we forgot to load our handler. No problem, select X will get us back out into Sparta DOS here. So we can load RS-232. Oops, let me power cycle the 850 so that it will load the handler. There we go. Now, uh, go ahead and run car. Now, it's going to take and warn us here that Memlo has changed because there's a handler in place now. This is fine. We'll go ahead and just enter car anyway. And we can see everything works as expected. So, you can use, do what you need to do, bounce back out, bounce back in without any particular problems here. So, what's next? Well, from this point, um, I need to take and do some last minute polishing of the code, but I also need to take and make the printed manual and the box designs because I want to take and uh, people have asked for this version, a nice uh, prepackaged version here in cartridge form that they can easily take and plug into their Ataris to, to, to utilize. So I'll take and build the documentation and write uh, and and build and do the box design get all of that out and running so and get that ready so we can take and offer that in the Atari Age store when we're ready uh, as always this is a public project so there are binaries uh, and source code available on github uh, in the usual place for the cartridge version here too so if you want to take and make your own that's great 
If you can help in any way whatsoever, please don't hesitate to hit me up on Twitter or to, to find me on Facebook and to uh, try to take and uh, offer some help, maybe some suggestions, things that you can, things that can be made better. Uh, you know, I'm receptive to all of it. So um, with that, I would like to appre uh, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this and uh, check the keep watching the space. Uh, there's a lot more interesting to be happening very soon. So until next time, guys. See you later.